Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on, YouTube? Diggy546, and we're back. The first film session of the 2022 season. A win. Literally, a film session with a win attached to it. I wanted to talk about Adoree Jackson. Adoree Jackson to me played the best game out of any defender. Pretty much when you look at it, he played the best all-around game of any defender. He was good in coverage. And he, he did a lot of good things in the game overall as far as setting the edge. I was worried about him, you know, in the run game, setting the edge, especially going up against Robert Woods, who's, who's one of the best blocking re receivers in the league. And he really played a physical game. And he, and he also backed it up with just your regular cover skills. So I'm going to start this play off right here. Adoree Jackson is 22. Your guy walking uh, to the top of the screen following the receiver. And he's going to line up right here. And it's just real straightforward. Watch. He sees that the toss is going uh, right, you know, according to the offense, their right side, his left side. Patient, patient, patient. Uses his speed. Makes it past the tackle waits and he completely cuts off this edge right here completely cuts off this edge now he doesn't completely make the tackle by itself but he's in there he's part of the tackle and he was he was responsible for setting that edge didn't have to do anything crazy and he did it responsibly so here's another play right here with a dory 22 lined up against i think uh this is kyle phillips the rookie uh anyway he locks arms Locks up with, uh, excuse this arrow right here. He locks up with this receiver and pretty much holds him. I mean, I know this is against a receiver, but to not give up any ground right here to me is impressive. I mean, Adoree has been known as a guy that wasn't a physical corner, and he made some physical plays today. He holds up perfectly. I'll play this in real time. Watch him not go anywhere. In fact, pushes the receiver back, pushes him back. Sets that edge, like, completely. Derrick Henry has nowhere to go. Now, you see, eventually the receiver gets the better of him as people get, you know, pushed into Dory's legs. But throughout this whole play, very strong at the point of contact. Sets the edge. Doesn't give up any ground. And that's exactly what you need because people underestimate the value of these corners in the run game. If a Dory ends up going... Give me a second. If Adore ends up getting pushed all the way back here, guess what? That's exactly where Derrick Henry's going to be going. Derrick Henry's going to be going right through this hole right here if Adore's not able to hold up or he's going to be cutting it back. A ton of things that can happen if he's not able to do this. So props to him on these two plays. Now, just because of the stigma on Adore Jackson, I just felt the need to show, you know, more of these plays than I would normally show because he's known as a guy that's not a physical corner. Well, watch number 22 right here. He's lined up across from uh, Robert Woods, but pay no attention to that. We're just going to watch this right here. He's going to make an open field tackle, kind of sitting right there, passes Robert Woods off in the zone. Tannehill probably should hit Robert Woods right here, but he doesn't. Hits the check down. And watch Adoree Jackson, I'll play in real time, make a beeline. Close the distance, open field tackle on a running back. Now, this is another reason here, as Adoree Jackson is the, at the bottom right of your screen, this is another reason why Adoree was highly drafted, why it was such uh, an eventful day when we got him in free agency, because he just has unique physical skills. His ability to turn his hips quicker than, than most corners in the league can really sets him apart. And you'll just see it right here. He's able to take away multiple routes at the same time with his speed, with his ability to flip his hips. Kind of just, you know, follows eight inside, is able to just seamlessly keep up with him because he's just so athletic, he can recover pretty much out of any stance as long as he's within five yards of you. So he just kind of just gives him the inside, leads him inside to Julian Love and the linebacker. So he's taken care of. And watch this little move right here as he flips his hips. Just kind of just backpedals. He's still taking away that route. Can, can go either way if he wants to. And then he sees Derrick Henry underneath. Tannehill makes the decision in, in a blink. He's there to, to get Derrick Henry out of bounds. If Henry catches that, he's there to hit him out of bounds. And Henry's a big guy, but right on that out of bounds marker, I, I believe he would have been able to get him out. So this is another play uh, 
with the Dory. Once again, just showing that he's in complete control here. He was never really under any kind of stress in coverage besides maybe one or two plays, which I'll show. But he was never really under too much stress in coverage. I mean, completely relaxed, completely in control. You're going to see number 22 get into his back pedal. Force the guy outside. He's doing exactly what he needs him to do. Knows exactly where the quarterback is. Knows his leverage. Still looking at the quarterback here in man coverage. Looks back over the other shoulder. Is still in great position with the receiver. And knows the speed advantage he has with the receiver. And he's just there the whole time. He's just there the whole time. And I'll tell you, one thing that I said in my post-game review, my analysis, was that we didn't give up a lot of yards after catch. And as I go through this, as I go through this uh this tape, Adoree Jackson is there on a bunch of these completions. Of, of completions that other guys gave up, Adoree Jackson is there a bunch of times. I don't know what just happened right there, but uh, here we go. Back to where we were. He's there a bunch of times, and just watch him just close out on here and make this tackle. Help him out with that tackle. But it just shows how much of complete control it is. I'll just play this in real time so you all can see. Forces him outside, has him under his thumb the entire time. Good stuff that, that you really just don't notice. All right, so right here, Dory is once again the cornerback on the bottom left of your screen. And this is, I think, their first drive. And Adore is just going to kind of just sit in man coverage against Robert Woods. In my opinion, he's playing a little far off to be able to kind of make up the gap that's in between them. Uh, he's, he's, in, he's in man coverage. They're only going to have two receivers running routes here, uh, kind of like a max protect here. But he's in man coverage. Um, Aaron Robinson does a good job of staying with his guy going down the field. But Adore Jackson is going to try to keep up with Robert Woods going across the field. And just watching in real time. Never really, he, he kept with the outside leverage. He kind of played it as if it were sort of like a zone. So this could be a, this could be right here, actually a cover three with the, you know, since you see Julian Love right here and you see Tay Crowder right there, there's no one really underneath. So this actually does look like a cover three. So exactly what's happening right here is a Dory Jackson it's kind of playing that outside leverage and the linebackers don't really get any depth, including Julian Love and Tay Crowder. They don't get any depth here. Uh, he's outside leverage and the pass is just going to get completed. If you have no one in the middle of the field and you're playing outside leverage, it's pretty much like a one-on-one -on -one drill in training camp. There's no way unless he gets, unless he gets all the way up on the line of scrimmage, there's no way he's going to be able to close that distance. So, I mean, they just took advantage of the linebackers not getting enough depth here. Uh, and this is one of the catches he gave up. He gave up another one. I don't have it here. But pretty much gave up one catch if you don't include this one. Which, I mean, I guess you can if you want to. But the way we just went over this, you can kind of tell it was, it was pretty much nothing anybody can do when they're telling you to play this far off and cover three, and they're not going to get any uh, depth from the linebacker. But uh, this is one play he gave something up. So this play actually is man coverage. Adori is at the bottom right of your screen. He's lining up against uh, Robert Woods. And this is just more of the same as far as Adori Jackson has incredible recovery speed. Incredible, like superhuman-like recovery speed. So let's just watch this here. It's pretty much beat. This is kind of like an inside whip route. Robert Woods, he sees him, you know, gearing up to come back to the inside of the field. And look at this distance right here. Before he makes this turn, Adoree Jackson is legitimately seven yards away from him. That's about what, in including the fact that they're not lined up straight towards the end zone. This is probably about seven total yards. And watch Adoree Jackson close this this quick. So he closed it this quick. But he got there early. He, he kind of bumped into him, put his hand on his back, and this ended up being a flag. Good play. A lot of times they won't call this, but it technically is pass interference, but there was no reason for him to get there early and, and touch him. He could have just kind of just waited on it right there, but it just shows the recovery speed right there. It's just 
it's, it's out of, it's bonkers. All right, once again, Adore Jackson is at the bottom right of your screen, the most bottom of the screen corner that, that you have. And talk about running a route for somebody here. He's against, against, he's again against Robert Woods. And just watch this here. Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Watch him flip the hips like he's really running around with the wide receiver. Still has his eyes on the quarterback. Adoree Jackson, I mean, this could come back to bite him in the future, but he does a really good job of this. He's able to keep his eye on the quarterback and man coverage. And, and what this tells me is that he's watching a lot of tape because he has not gotten exposed. He hasn't gotten shaken out of his shoes. I haven't seen it. And he's able to watch that quarterback pretty much the entire time while he's in man coverage. That means he knows where these receivers are going. And just watch him just cut off that route right there. Runs the route with him. Runs the route for him. Flip the hips. No issue. So Adori is at the top of your screen right here on the left. And I just really love this play because... These plays are going to start to turn into interceptions in the future. They, they really are going to start turning into interceptions going forward. So just watch this play. He's in man coverage. They're a man across the board. This is the last drive. Man coverage across the board. They're sending the house. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six guys. So they got six guys and six guys blitzing. He's keeping his eye on the quarterback pretty much this entire time. Looks away to look at that wide receiver. Has him on the outside. And remember that recovery speed I talked about here? Now, he knows. Look at Ryan Tannehill as I take this back a little bit. He knows Ryan Tannehill is facing pretty much the right, the left side of the field from Ryan Tannehill's point of view. The left side of the field or, you know, maybe the middle side of the field. Ryan Tannehill does not have the type of arm talent of a Patrick Mahomes, of a Josh Allen, of a Justin Herbert, to where he's going to quick hitch, or he's going to, he could probably quick hit, but he's, he doesn't have that kind of arm talent to make this throw all the way outside the numbers, all the way on the other side of the field from the left hash, that far down the field, without a Dory Jackson having the time to close the distance and intercept this pass. So, this is a really heady play from Adore Jackson because right here, if Tannehill has to hitch and throw that ball, if he has to turn his body to where his foot is facing, you know, Adore Jackson and, and, and Robert Woods right there, by that time, Adore Jackson already closes down on this route and it's probably a pick six. So just something that you notice as far as noticing who he's playing against, Noticing the leverage, using the field to his advantage, with, which is probably the biggest part of playing cornerback. Using the field, using the boundary to your advantage. And it's just something I noticed right there. Tannehill doesn't end up going that way, but again, if Tannehill has to switch his body, as soon as he sees Tannehill switch his feet over there, he's going to be closing down on that receiver. And now to wrap it up, Adore is at the bottom of your screen, and Adore Jackson would have called game right here. He would have probably had the game winning interception if he didn't drop it. But O'Shane Zimenez tipped the ball. But let's just watch this right here. He's dropping back in his back pedal. Again, using the sideline to his advantage. Taking a look at the quarterback. This is how he's able to, to, to break on these balls so fast and, and be around other guys in man coverage as if he's playing zone because he's able to look at this quarterback while covering the receiver. So he bails on that receiver once he sees the quarterback in his throwing motion. And he's pretty much going to be, you know, almost DRC type of undercutting this route. And he's probably going to be gone with it. He might get a hand on the ball. He might get an interception if this doesn't get tipped. It's kind of difficult to see exactly where Tannehill is throwing it. But if you look at his foot, it looks like he's throwing it somewhere. Let's see if I can get my highlighter here. Somewhere in this area. Somewhere in this area, either to this guy or to this guy, but it's somewhere in this area. And this is exactly where you see a Dory Jackson breaking on. So he could have possibly had the game winning interception instead of this ball getting tipped. But it just shows, again, the awareness that he has while he's out there playing corner. The fact that he's able to watch these quarterbacks while playing man coverage 
and really know where the receiver is at the same time. So that's all I have for Dory Jackson here. You guys let me know what you're thinking of how he played. I think that he could probably be the cornerback one that we we thought that he could be going forward. We didn't think James Bradbury would play out this whole deal. That's just how the NFL works. But Adore Jackson is much younger than Bradbury. He doesn't get as many pass deflections, but they don't throw it to his side as much. He was really good all the last year. And now he's, you know, of course, this wide receiver core isn't as good as most wide receiver cores in the league. So we'll see if he can keep up this level of play. But he was comfortable all day. Didn't really give up much. Was never really shaken out of his shoes. And that's Adore Jackson for you all in his, uh, in his return back to the Titans. You guys let me know what you're expecting from him the rest of the way.